to thanks, Vinci, for uh, doing this discussion with the secure govern and growth teams in development on set and the test platform. It looks like Will has the first question. Hi, thank you. A uh, bit of an open-ended uh, question to, to start with. Um, but just kind of throwing it out there, how best can a uh, test platform help our, our counterpart teams uh, with their quality requirements? Before we jump into that, does anybody have any question regarding what test platform really is going to be doing? How is it different from quality engineering? Um, so that way you have a better understanding of what uh, it's going to, what to ask for, what to look for from test platform. That's it. If you could give the uh, one minute overview, that would be great. Absolutely. Um, there is a quick video where they just talks about what test platform sub department really is. But in a nutshell, quality engineering is transformed test platform. Trust platform will have three teams. And the primary goal of doing this change is to give the space for test uh, SETs to be able to contribute to tooling needs within GitLab. So for example, if there is an environment setup need that you have, you could easily reach out to your test platform, SET counterpart to help out set that environment up. If you need production like data in your testing purposes, then that could be something we could help out with. If there is pipeline efficiency issues that would be, you want someone to look into, that would be another area. So instead of focusing on just end-to-end -end tests, which was primarily the responsibility of SATs in the past, now the focus is gonna be more about setting up environments, test data needs, giving you the guidance as to what could probably help move faster and more efficiently for releasing a project or releasing a feature. So that way, if you were stuck with something that would, we should be the ones to, able to come in and help you out with idea, with probably the best tools out there that you could try out in order to move faster with your testing approaches. So that's where this gives. Before teams were all embedded, the way we wanna do this is the test engineering team who is embedded within the product sections will be the one collecting these feedback from the development and product teams to say we would need XYZ as a tool to be able to move forward. The test engineer assigned to that particular uh, product group could either do that initiative or they could reach out a test and tools infrastructure team, which will be the core team working on all the tooling needs, all the GitLab QA uh, infrastructure needs that could hopefully then deliver that tool for you. So the test engineering team is gonna be considered them as to be your um, your um, team that could work with you closely to gather this feedback and then work and share that feedback across test platforms to deliver these tools for you. That's the whole purpose. The test engineering team would be on rotation basis, meaning it's not required that everyone needs to be on rotation, but they would be, if they have a desire, they can move different group. This way they would have the option of working with multiple different product sections, understand the need on the ground level itself from the product and development team, and then work towards achieving those or tackling those tech, um, tech decks that we have had in the past. So that is a direction as to why we are moving this in this direction and having more space and more dedicated teams to work on tooling needs. Does that help understand why we are doing test platform and then how it could hopefully be more valuable than what the current quality engineering team is gonna do? On that note, going back to Will's question, what can we do to help out from a quality requirements? Olivia, it looks like you have a Thanks. thought on Yeah, that. one of the things we recently faced with continuous gravity scans is trying to do some performance testing, some load testing. Uh, it was difficult to find the right, the right documentation, the right process, and the right environment to do that. Uh, we went through multiple uh, different approaches and uh, we were very helpful to set up uh, a reference architecture because this was what was um, most meaningful to us to replicate um, a self-managed instance, for instance. But um, we realized that during um, in this environment, a lot of the um, test dependencies are not available because it's considered like a production environment. So a lot of the tools we were using to seed the database, for instance, were not available in that environment. So we had to go back and change things a bit. And also, I think it was a bit difficult to have access to uh, these instance systems and try to 
help into uh, the processes to figure out what's going on there. So uh, it was a bit in a way. Uh, we spent some some time on that with Will. And uh, at the end of the day, we rolled back to using some um, GDK setup or Gitpod to try to assess the, the situation. So having a, a really uh, a greatly documented process for load testing on self-managed instances would be great. Uh, in the in the documentation, for instance, we referenced them. Um, the staging ref instance, but it's a shared environment. So it's good for very um, short testing, but for something where you want to make sure that the, the instance is stable or doing some uh, long running jobs, for instance, because this instance can often be uh, deployed onto. So it's it kind of, it's cutting all the ongoing uh, psychic job, for instance. So we, we didn't find, we haven't found anything that was suitable for our um, use case. Thank you for that feedback. That's absolutely the reason why we have a self-managed platform team now. That is our second team. Well, there is a specific numbering there, but that is one of the teams among the three. And the sole responsibility of that team is to continue implementing on GPT, GitLab Performance Toolkit. We, these are the tools that quality engineering team previously known as QE team has been working on, but never had the time to really prioritize because everyone is embedded within different product groups. Now with this new team form, one of the main criteria for us is to start working towards resolving all of these challenges. So you are doing exactly the right thing, working with your counterpart SET to provide them, to work with them on setting up the environment. They'll be the ones to give us the feedback. These are things that needs to be fixed for this particular GPT tool so that we could then use it for next purposes. They will take this feedback to the self-managed platform team. We will implement that in our roadmap and then continue delivering towards it. So th that is the way we are planning and dividing up these three teams. So right direction today, I don't have an answer for your, for your problem, but that is on our roadmap for something we will be tackling in a way so that it could be useful. And your point percent for all this would be the counterpart SAT assigned to your particular product group. So you don't have to reach out to three different teams. You just need to reach out to the SAT assigned to your product, sorry, product stage, and they'll be the ones to run points with the rest of the test platform sub department and move things forward. But this is great feedback. This is exactly what we are looking for, what is not working and how we can help out. And this is a tooling need. So this is exactly where SETs should be able to showcase and help out. And this should not be your responsibility at all. Give us a use case and then we can work towards enabling it for you. So thank you, great question and great feedback. Um, just on that note, Will, could you do you we have an issue capturing what was the pain points that we could then probably take it back to the team? I think that um, they were be captured in the retro, but I'll 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 have a look for where exactly it was documented. That would be helpful. That would help us build out the roadmap for the self-managed platform team when it comes to GPT. Thank you. So, uh, Alan. Is not on any volunteers, especially somebody who hasn't spoken in this meeting yet, to verbalize Alan's comment. I can verbalize it. Thanks, Mark. Um, so, Alan is asking: Are there plans to include more engineers to the test engineering team responsible for govern? If not, is there a plan to simplify or prepare another framework to allow software engineers to write simplified end-to-end -end tests? Um, I'll, I'll hop on as, as part of the second point of, of, of the question. Um, I, I pointed out that we do have initiatives to um, the aim of which are to simplify the writing of, of, of NPN specs. Um, Vinci actually has the link um, just in, in, in the next uh, bullet point here. Um, if, if you want to have a look at that yourself, um, and I'm, 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 I'm involved in one of the tasks. Um, Standardizing on on data test ID for uh, test attributes, um, and we also are are mindful of the shift left approach in that, um, do we really need so many end to end tests? You know, are 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 we capturing this? Or are 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 we testing this at a lower level? Um, being mindful of the test permits, um, which we should have a plethora of 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 unit level tests, for example. Um, going all the way up, and our 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 end to end spec should be um like reduced in comparison, and um yeah, I'll I'll hand over to uh, Vincy who um will uh, extrapolate on that answer answer your part one of of, your, of the question. 
Yes, thank you, Will. Thank you for pointing that one out. So with respect to answering um, second part of Alan's question, we have an epic called Enable Engineers Right End to End Test. This epic was created based on all the feedbacks SETs have received over the course of years, working with their product group development team to see what is actually holding you all back from contributing to end to end test. And to, to Alan's question, yes, it's a little bit hard and we need to simplify it. So that epic should capture pretty much all the feedback that we have received. That said, it may not be fully uh, scoped out. If there is anything that's not listed there that is actually a pain point, feel free to leave a comment in there and we can work towards tackling those. But that is the goal. The goal is what can we do to current GitLab QA framework so it's not foreign and it can be contributed by everybody. And also with respect to test pyramid, at to Will's point, our end-to-end -end test should not be um, the, the largest or the pyramid. It becomes top heavy at that point. We should focus on having test coverage in lower levels. So what can we do on shifting left and how can we enable that? So that is also something we'll be looking at as part of this end -to -end, this um, test pyramid approach and enable developers write more end-to-end -end test. The test. Right now, I believe we have quite a lot of end-to-end -end tests and that's taking quite a lot of time um, so we will continue with this initiative of re revisiting um, the end to end that already exists. We did this approach, I believe, in Q3 and also maybe in Q2, where we are reviewing at a stage level all the different um, test layers we have end to end, unit test and integration test, and proposing shift left. I think SETs in your groups may already have had these conversations with you, where what can we do to enable that? So that will continue. So that way there isn't a need to write a lot of end-to-end -end tests, but if there is, the simplified framework that the team is working on should be easier for you all to contribute to. The purpose of the test and tools infrastructure team is to simplify the framework to make it easier. I hope you this gives you an understanding. The test and tools infrastructure team is purely focusing on the tooling needs, framework uh, simplification needs. The test engineering team is the one working with you directly on load testing needs, performance testing needs, or um, bugs, or any of those things. And the self-managed platform team is purely focusing on self-managed, performance testing, get reference architecture, and those areas. So that's how we have differentiated each team so you know whom to reach out to. But to make it easier, feel free to reach out to your counterpart team. But that's the part two of the question. For part one, with respect to hiring, no. There is no hiring plans for test platform currently at this point. We want to see how this transformation is going to actually pan out. What are the gaps with this transformation that we probably need to address to? The, I, I mentioned this vaguely in the first question. The test engineering team will be on rotation basis. That way, if an SET is interested to try a different product group, it's an easier switch rather than what it used to be before because they have to switch the managers and everything. Now it's much more easier. This avoids silos meaning in SCT having more eyes or more um, SCTs focusing on different groups will bring more visibility. What worked in different product group and what did not, what can we implement here? Great way to move forward. And the second thing is, it also gives us the flexibility of assigning more than one SCT to a particular product stage. For example, if there are really significant changes going on in govern or secure stage, and we really need to have an SCT embedded, Historically, we would have to request for a borrow request, and then we have to see how it works out, work with the different product teams to make that happen. Now, we could just say there's a business use case, let's assign two SCTs here so that we can move things faster. So that way, there isn't a need to hire as of today, but that said, let's see how next year fiscal year 25 pans out, and there is a need, of course, we can look into it, but for now, no. And this rotation should hopefully help address these um, critical changes that's happening in each stage level. Does that help? I know Alan is not here, but does that help answer the questions or do you have any follow-up questions for these two? That's great, Vincy and Will, oh. thank you. So in three, I had a question is, if there's quote unquote, one thing development team should keep in mind to improve our quality and reduce the chances of uh, customer facing incidents, what might that be? Yes. As we have always said here in GitLab, quality is everybody's responsibility. Now we don't even have a quality team, meaning it truly is everybody's responsibility. So the one thing, I have a few, but I'm just going to stick with one, that's the ask, is test coverage. 
ensuring that we have adequate test coverage at, at all different layers, unit layer, integration layer, and end-to-end -end test layer, and ensuring the stability or reliability of these tests. A lot of these tests, including end-to-end -end tests, gets quarantined, which means it's a test gap, which means there's probably chance of bugs leaking into production. So ensuring we have adequate test coverage with all the trainers going in and the reliability of this test would be really crucial for us to ensure that they, we are not causing any production incidents. And if a regression is introduced and regressions could be caught if you had a good test coverage, so it goes hand in hand. If a regression is introduced, then considering that as the highest priority to get it resolved in a matter of days, weeks, or at least the next milestone. We recently... Uh, worked on adding a section called regressions within our handbook. I have given the MR link and Slack message on that one. Focusing on regression and test coverage would be key. But then again, always feel free to reach out to us if they say anything that's not clear and we'll be here to help out any way we can. But those would be my two things to keep in mind. Great. So uh, Zivago is my outside shadow this week. Uh, Zivago, I don't know if you, if you want to turn on your video. That'd be great. Yes. So any questions for the group based on what we discussed? And also, how do you do quality at spin? Would that be interesting at the company you're at to compare and contrast, perhaps? Yeah, at, at tier, uh, uh, at spin too as well, we, um, everyone does their own QA. We also had a central QA team, um, but that got, um, that was disbanded to, uh, and then pushing a lot of those tests and, and, and those particular uh uh, QA tasks to the engineering teams themselves. And so um, we would have just a workflow we, um, and uh, as far as like, you know, getting everything through tests, depending on uh, what it would be. If it's a mobile test, then you know, we use a certain set of services for, for those particular things. Um, yeah, so yeah, before we'd have an actual QA tester to test every single end-to-end um, -end flow, for example. Uh, whether it be uh, putting, putting uh, for example, if we had to test out firmware for scooters, um, then you know, so we'd have a, a number of different tests, uh, and you know, and someone would be going, physically doing that because it's a hardware device. So someone would actually have to do this and um, and, and going through those whole pro the whole t test suite type of thing. So yeah. <laughs> So how, how do you do the integration of software uh, software tests and hardware tests now? I'm just curious, since you have um, um, scooters, yeah. and you know that's not a code word for some special project. You actually uh, spin has physical scooters. It's the actual so physical you, scooter. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how so, do you do, yeah, yeah. How so do, you do that? Get, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The firmware side of things, so the hardware side, so that comes from the manufacturer. So we'd have some requests for firmware. They would send us they would send us hardware uh, the firmware and then. Um, it would go through a set of suite of tests that we had set up, you know, making sure that, you know, everything works as intended. Uh, on the software side, then there's the whole integration on the software and hardware side, uh, because the IoT device is very different um, compared to what's on the, the back end side of things. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's just it's just someone has to go through, do an actual ride, go outside, <laughs> make sure GPS works properly, uh, you know, and and you know, setting up the kind of different slow ride zones and things, and make sure this the scooters do slow do slow down, all those type of things. So, it's a it's it's a very manual process, unfortunately. Um, uh, there's some things that could be automated, but uh, you know, a lot of it, you know, when the, the integration part is very manual, because someone has to like, go out and do this piece it does sound like fun testing though to get on the scooter and yeah and, uh, but i think uh, from, a, from a qa person's uh perspective i think they go out and they have to ride the scooter <laughs> like every you know for 30 minutes and and make sure it works properly uh yeah i i, I can see it getting a little old sometimes <laughs> vincy and will and others any any um uh, things that uh, you've done at GitLab or at other companies that you think uh, Zivago might be able to benefit from, from how they're doing testing? I actually do have a follow-up question for you. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. To get to yours yeah. was. No, no. That is, so you mentioned that now you do not have a quality centralized team, right? But now it's yeah. really accessible. 
we are just uh, going on this adventure journey right now. What feedback or what guidance you would say you could give us to ensure that this transformation that we're going through is going to be successful here? What we do we need to do from both sides? Yeah, I think the biggest piece was uh, getting buy-in from the engineering teams uh, because they were so used to, hey, QA, here it is. <laughs> Please do this testing. And then uh, and then now it's like, oh, I have to write my own tests. Uh, uh, and then it's up to the kind of engineering leads to go ahead and say, hey, you know, uh, these are the right tests to perform. Um, and then also being proactive on a lot of those things, right? Um, what metrics do you want to see and those type of things, right? Uh, those are going to be biggest that those are the big challenges we saw at spin uh, but eventually people you know they they, they eventually got it and uh it, it, it's it's just uh and then i think some of them went through some kind of training stuff that we did i, I don't remember exactly what we we sent them to um and it, it, it and it could, i think these some of these conversations are great uh, these kind of open office type of things uh, always to come in and talking as a group, because I'm sure there's other groups that are probably a little bit more ahead of other groups. Um, and so they can help each other out. And, you know, in general, it's coming together all as, as a single team, right? So, yeah. And just uh, just just to clarify there, um, here in GitLab, though, it has never been like, we have a quality team, just throw it over the fence, mm -hmm. we'll take it. It's never yeah. been that here. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It's collaborative. Um, it's always understanding that it is everyone's responsibility. So we, I would say we are already halfway there with the mindset. So that's great. And that's why we are doing the shift because it makes a lot of sense. Um, it's just how do we make sure that it just happen efficiently without adding too much load for anybody and how to make it better. Um, but yes, we are having many of these AMA sessions with different product sections to help them understand and open questions. Uh, we always focus on iteration. So if something is not working out today, we'll continue to work on it in the future. Um, so yes, thank you. That's really good to know. And to answer Wayne's question earlier, everything is automated. Why don't we put the scooter on a treadmill and have the treadmill run at a higher speed and the scooter go down? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, it's hard to fake GPS a little bit, but I mean, you could, but <laughs> that, that, so those are the, those are kind of the bigger ones because sometimes, um, because that's all money because if we go into a no ride zone for example it's all gps done and the gps has to be really fast because mm -hmm. if they get into no ride zone for even a minute they might be passing the no ride zone and just go right past it and then we'll get fined by the city or whatever else it's it's a uh, very very important <laughs> that someone actually does you know go through those motions but yeah it's yeah <laughs> but well, yeah what's, what's automation you we are uh... sure. <laughs> what cities have spin uh, scooters? I'm just curious. Uh, well, San Francisco, I mean, definitely has it. Um, there, there's there's a number of different scooters, uh, spin scooters everywhere. <laughs> a lot, you know, it's going to be kind of urban environments for sure because they don't they only go, you know, fifteen miles an hour and uh, that type of thing. So um, you you won't find it out as much in the suburban side of things because. Um, they all have batteries. I haven't happened to see one in Atlanta. Has anybody happened to actually see a spin scooter where they happen to live? Maybe a quick emoji tag or hand wave. Just be interesting <laughs> to hear that. No, not yet. It sounds, but cool. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Pretty surprising. Yeah. I mean, the barrier, I mean, the barrier. So it's, you know, San Francisco definitely is, is one of the, you'll see some in Santa Monica. Um, I think there's probably some primarily there. in the U.S. Is that correct? Or, or uh, they're only the U.S. It's only the only U.S. US. Only it US. might be uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. not everybody on this call right now, but quite a few of the people on the call are not in the U.S. They're in, in Europe and elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. So that's probably why we yeah, didn't see as many also, people raise their hand. <laughs> we're also part of tier, or used to be part of tier. So if you see a tier scooter, then uh, they're, they're over in Europe as well. So great. Thanks, Vincy. Thanks, Will, and thanks thanks for the context, Abago. That's great. And thank so, you, Wayne, for having yeah. this. So our next uh, team day call is at uh, nine Pacific uh, with Hillary and Salmon Product Management. So we'll see everybody who's interested in that topic then. Cheers.